This program was produced under the auspices of the John Marshall Student Bar Association. A special thanks to the Joyce Foundation, whose generous assistance and cooperation made this effort possible. The caption at the bottom of this aging French lithograph tells a story too often told before. The story of a man unable to find a solution in the courts. It says, my dear sir, it is absolutely impossible to argue your case. You lack the most important detail. That detail being my attorney's fee. Everybody, please rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This branch of Circuit Court of County Cook is now in session pursuant to adjournment. The Honorable Judge Emanuel Rissman presiding. Please be seated and remain silent. You came into the pro se court, and you're here, and this is one court that is different from any other court in this county. Pro se means by yourself. If you're the party who is suing, you have sued pro se without an attorney. The other side has been brought in this court, and the other side may or may not be represented by an attorney. However, most people do not use an attorney in this courtroom. And it is because of this I wish to explain what our procedures are when you step before me to tell me your story. Primarily, tell me your story as simply as you would tell it to a friend. When you do tell me your story, and you do tell me it in simple form, Try not to repeat your story more than twice. I should have it by then. I know no one in this courtroom. I have never seen anyone in this courtroom before. I will try to give each of you a full and fair hearing. When judgment is entered, whether you win your case or you lose your case, other than the few suggestions I may have to make to you, you will turn around and leave court without any further ado or any further argument. We'll now call the first case, Mr. Clerk. Quincy versus Lydia's Lakeshore Boutique. Raise your right hands, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimonies you're about to give in this cause, the truth, the whole truth, so I hope you got Ms. Quincy, your shoe the Lakeshore Boutique for $80. Will you tell this court why, please? Well, Your Honor, I really wanted this dress for this reception I was going to. My cousin was getting married for the third time, and my husband and I were standing up for her. And I paid $80 for this dress because I really liked it, and I wanted it. But when I got home, I noticed there was a soil on the dresser. It was so soiled, it soiled so badly, I couldn't wear it. I had to wear a black dress. So, Yana, I looked like I was going to a wake instead of a wedding. I was really embarrassed. Two days later, I took the dress back to Lydia's boutique. She embarrassed me so badly in front of all the other customers, accusing me of wearing it and returning it. I went back with the sole purpose of exchanging the dress. Excuse me, did you ever wear that kind? No, I certainly didn't, sir. All right, go ahead. But since she treated me so badly in the store, I decided I did not want, and I wanted my money back. I don't want to ever do business with this what lady What did she again. say? She merely stated I couldn't get the I couldn't get have a re exchange or get my money back because I had worn the dress. She made that assumption, and I don't know how she could have. What did you wear at the wedding, sir? I have a picture here of me at the wedding, wearing a black dress. Thank you very much. Do you have the garment with you today? Yes, I do, sir. And here it is, soiled right here at the waist. Would you please stand back so that yes, I can sir. see it a little better? Yes. I see the spot you're now talking about. And you never did wear that garment? No, sir, I didn't. And this is a black garment you wore at the wedding yes, the sir. next day after the purchase of this garment? Right. Anything else you wish to add at this time? No. Had you ever done business with uh, the boutique before? Yes, I have. In fact, I'm wearing an outfit of hers now. She has a very lovely clothing, sir. Thank you very much. Ma'am, <laughs> would you tell me what your defense is here? Your Honor, I've been in this business for years, and I've encountered all kinds of problems. That's why I initiated several policies in my store. One of these policies is that all merchandise must be inspected for soil or damage before it is boxed and given to a customer. Now, this stops customers from purchasing dresses they can't afford for special occasions, and then returning them with false claims of damage. 
Now, we know that some people are dissatisfied with their choices, so we allow them to bring back their merchandise for exchange, no cash refunds. Your Honor, I have here a sales receipt. It's a Xerox copy of her receipt. Now, it states plainly, sir, exchanges only, no cash refunds. Now, we have this policy posted several places throughout the store. But since I feel this dress has obviously the been dress worn, worn, this dress has by been worn. me. I don't know who it is. One moment, worn by me. one moment, please. If there are any remarks, you will both address them to the court and not to each other. We will have no shouting match in my court again. Do you both understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, now continue with your story. I feel since this dress has obviously been worn, I have the right to refuse it for exchange. And what makes you say that it has been worn, ma'am? The type of soil stain. Not only that, I inspected the dress before I gave it to her. Now, your bill indicates that this was sold the day before. Yes, sir. Did she tell you what she wanted to use that dress for? Yes, sir, a wedding. Have you seen this picture? Would you take a look at it, please? Yes, Your Honor. The plaintiff has testified that the fact that she wore that black dress now person would not wear a black dress at a wedding if the other dress had been in good shape. Do you have any comment to make on that? No, Your Honor. Nothing at all? No, sir. And it's obvious that it was the very next day because the close-up of that picture shows her standing next to the wedding cake with the date Saturday, August 22nd. Accordingly, I'm going to have to find for the plaintiff here in the sum of $80 and costs. That will be all. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the next case? One night last April, I was driving home from work. It was late and I was exhausted. I'd put in four hours of overtime. I was anxious to get home, but I was taking it real easy. I was just approaching an intersection not too far from my house and I could barely see the light. And as I said, I was taking it slow and I didn't go through the light until it was green. Right in the middle of the intersection, blam, something hit me. And I can tell you I was pretty shook up. I'm going to file a claim in pro se court now. I sure hope they can. I'm going in to talk to my cleaners again. I've just filed a complaint against them with the small claims court. See, I took my jacket in to be cleaned and I was going to store it for the summer. Well, it happened that the weather changed, so I took it out again to wear it. It's completely ruined. The lining is stretched, the fabric is ruined. I didn't know what to do. So I went back to the cleaners and I showed them the coat. They say, sorry, miss, there's not anything we can do about it. Well, I have a hard time believing that. They're reputable cleaners. So I told them, I'm going to go down and file a complaint against you unless I can get some satisfaction. So I went downtown, I took the time, I filed my complaint. The court will issue a subpoena and set a trial date. Well, in the meantime, I'd like to go back in and talk to him, and maybe we can settle out of court. It'll be a little faster. I don't see that there's anything else I can do. You've probably all been in a similar situation. A who won't return your security deposit. A vandal who damages your car or other property. A company that sells you shoddy merchandise or gives you poor service. Maybe it's happened to a friend or neighbor. Or maybe you've been on the other side threatened with a suit by someone you've had dealings with. There is a public forum where you can take complaints such as the ones we've just mentioned. It's the Pro Se Court, and there are many such courts located across the country. The rules, laws, and procedures of most Pro Se Courts are very similar. So let's take a look at the Cook County Court System in Chicago. The Pro Se Branch of Small Claims Courts is for cases involving less than $300. Pro Se Court is for those people with $300 or less in damages who don't want to go through the expense and trouble of hiring a lawyer. Pro Se means for himself, in his own behalf, in person. Other Pro Se Courts in the country might have different rules and dollar limits, but their basic purpose and procedures are the same. Let's look at the procedure of how to sue in Pro Se Court. Going to Pro Se Court means a commitment. It takes time, a little work, and some thought. For you must act as your own attorney. But once you've decided to sue, the pro se court has made the paperwork easy for you to complete. 
If you were in Chicago, in room 602 of the Daily Center, you would find a special desk manned primarily by students or volunteers from the American Bar Association who will help you with the proceedings. These individuals are there to help you file the paperwork and prepare your case. They'll show you how to narrow down what's important to your case and what isn't. For those who speak Spanish, there's usually someone there who can speak it with you. Hi. Can I help you? Yes, I, I'm Jack Nichols, and this is my wife, Debbie. Uh, the reason we came down here is we moved out of our apartment over a month ago. We're still trying to get our security deposit back. Okay. I've called the landlord about five times, and every time he just ignores me and refuses to give us back our $275. The way I see it, I've got three choices. I can keep badgering the landlord, hoping he'll give me the money back eventually. Mm -hmm. I can hire a lawyer, but that'll cost us almost as much as we'll get back. Or a friend told me about small claims court that I could sue and represent myself. And that's what we want to do. Okay. Do you have the name and the address of the party you wish to file the lawsuit against? Yes, we do. Okay. Mr. Frederick R. Spacer. How would you like your defendant served? By certified mail or by the sheriff? Well, could you tell us the difference? Sure. Certified mail will cost you a total of $11.25. It's through the mail. The court will send out the notice. And your defendant does not have to sign for it if he does not wish to. He can either refuse to sign for it once it gets to the post office or just not claim his mail. Sheriff is Deputy Sheriff of Cook County goes out and serves personally to the defendant and that'll cost you sixteen dollars plus thirty cents per mile. But he is served that way. You know yes, it's personal it. service. Well, I think we better go with the sheriff. Yes, knowing Mr. Spacek, I think we better. Okay. Then I'll have to fill out five copies of the complaint and summons. Your complaint states a brief summary of what happened, the amount claimed, and the time the case arose. Uh, your summons has to inform the party, your defendant, when to come in and file an appearance with the court. He's got to come into this room on a certain date. It's called a return date. He's got to file an appearance and submit himself to the jurisdiction of the court. Okay? Now, we're missing a lot of work time. Now, I'm taking time off from my job coaching at the high school, and, and, and Debbie's missing a lot of time at the studio. She's a commercial artist, and this time that she's missing, she's going to have to make up in order to make, beat a deadline. Uh -huh. Now, can we sue for damages, or punitive damages on, on lost working time? No, not in this court. Not to file for punitive damages, only the monetary damage sustained. Okay? Okay. Well, see, it's just that, you know, it's the trouble of driving down here to file the complaint and then to come down again for the court date. And probably if the deposit had been more than $300, we would have hired a lawyer. And if it had been less, mm -hmm. we probably would have forgotten the whole thing. But the $275 makes it worth the cost of our time and effort. Yeah. The third time he refused to give us back our, our security deposit, I tried to settle with him for a smaller amount. But uh, he, he just wasn't listening. I uh, called a couple of times, and, and all he, he hung up on me finally. Okay. Um, can I have your names again? All right, that's Debbie and Jack Nichols. Okay. And your defendant's name? Frederick R. Spacek. Nichols versus Spacek. Raise your right hands, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this cause the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? Mr. Nichols, you're suing here for the sum of $275. Will you please tell me why? Well, Your Honor, two years ago, I signed a lease with, to rent an apartment for Mr. Spacek. It was a two-year lease, and we moved out just like we were supposed to. Excuse me for interrupting. Would you have a copy of that lease with you? Yes, Your Honor, right here. Thank you very much. Go ahead with your story. Well, we were supposed to get our security deposit back, that's what we agreed to when we signed the lease, but we didn't. And we left the apartment in very good condition. We worked very hard to, to leave it that way. I also have some pictures here, Your Honor, that will show exactly how we left the apartment. My wife, Debbie, took the pictures just as we moved out. We thought we might have some trouble with Mr. Spacek, so we took the pictures. Who took these pictures? My wife, Debbie. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, we thought we might have some trouble with Mr. Spacek because of last winter. You know how cold it was. Well, he kept skimping on the heat. As a matter of fact, Your Honor, he is so tight with the heat that we almost froze to death in the apartment. Anyway, we repainted the whole apartment. And I might add, we did it all by ourselves. We paid for the whole thing by ourselves. We did a good job. We repainted all the walls, and everything was immaculate. Uh, when we had finished, the place is a real show place. 
And all our friends thought that we'd done a, a great job. It was beautiful. As a matter of fact, Your Honor, I have a witness who can testify to that. Do you have that witness in court with yes, you? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Would you please call your witness up? Yes, Your Honor, Ms. Sherry Whalens. While she's coming up, will you take these photographs? I've examined them carefully. Thank you. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this cause the truth, the whole truth, to you guys? Ma'am, would you tell me what you know about the situation? Well, when they moved into SpaceX apartment, I was there. I was there when they and I was there when they moved out, and I saw the difference. It was what was the difference? It was in much better shape. They painted all the walls. They even decorated the nursery. I helped paint the nursery, and um, everything was cleaned up. I don't even know why they moved in there in the first place because it was so raggedy. But they fixed it up real nice, and they had a party, and all their friends really liked it. Now you said you were there the day they moved out. Yes, I was. What was the condition of the walls and floors other than normal wear and tear? It was in tip-top shape. The walls were clean. Ev everything was You didn't in see any broken windows, no. toilet seats cracked, or no. that sort of thing? Everything was like that before they moved in, and they Do got Do you know whether or fixed. not the range and refrigerator had been cleaned out? Yes, they both had. All right, thanks very much. How about you, sir? Anything else you wish to add at this time? Uh, not this time, Your Honor. Ma'am, I'd like to hear from you. You've been quiet here. Tell me, what was the condition of the apartment? What cleaning did you do, if any? Well, without, I cleaned the oven and the refrigerator, both inside and out. You say you cleaned the oven. How did you clean the oven? I used an oven cleaner and a sponge. You did use an yes. oven cleaner? And how about the refrigerator? Did you do anything to that? I used common and a sponge on the inside and the outside of the refrigerator. And the rest of the apartment was left in good condition, vacuumed and the like? Yes, that's correct. Anything else you wish to add now? Well, I think that we deserve to have our security deposit. Ma'am, I'll be the judge of that. Sir, you've been very anxious to tell me what your side of the case is, and I'd like to hear it now. What is your defense here, our defenses? Well, it's like this. Your Honor, I've been having nothing but trouble from these people since the very first day they moved in. Number one, they're always blasting their hi-fi set. I mean, it, it, the noise would drive you crazy, because I live in the apartment uh, right, right beneath them. Well, well, first of all, like I told you, they didn't actually move out on the 31st. They moved out the next morning. There I am, sitting what in front of the what TV. What move out? Well, I was about, uh, I think it was about 2 a.m. or something like that. I, I'm sitting, I, I know because I'm watching a late show on TV. And, and I, all of a sudden, I hear this big commotion. Well I, well, I get up, and I go out on the back porch to see what's going on. And there's these two guys carrying out the bed, right? Well, uh, well I look, and I see that one of them is Nichols. And I says to him, are you finally out? And, and he looks at me and he says, ain't nothing but the phone jacks left. Well, well, right there and then, he asked me for the security deposit back. What do you tell him? Well, I said, you know, I, I, I got to inspect the apartment first, right? So, so I go in to inspect the apartment, and what do I see? But the back railing is busted. Well, well, I knew it wasn't busted before, so I figured it must have been these two guys who busted it, carrying the bed out. All right, let me interrupt you. Did you have the back railing repaired? Yes, sir. Do you have the bills for the repair to that back railing? Yeah, yeah, I got the... Can I see those, please? I got the carpenter. He gave me a bill here. Yeah, here, one dollar. Thank you. Well, that wasn't all, Your Honor. Go on with your story. Yeah, well, then I, I'm, I'm doing some more inspecting of the, of, the, of the premises there, and I see that the refrigerator is busted. If that's not working either, I know i got to fix that too, okay? Well, I'm not through yet. I'm walking through the apartment, and I go into to the, what we call the library. They, they, they call it the, the nursery. Well, Your Honor, I was shocked. I mean, it was awful. I, the, the whole wall was covered with this weird paint. I mean, I, I knew that I couldn't rent the apartment with it looking that way. I had to get that mess repainted. Let me have the evidence. What color was this weird paint? Oh, it was all different kinds of colors, Your Honor. I don't remember. Were it was just a light, mess. It was all were kinds they of... light or dark? Oh, they, were, they were dark. Dark they were dark, paint. but lots, lots of different kind of weird colors. Did you have to repaint that? Yeah, wall? It, it took three coats of paint, as a matter of fact, and it took a, a painter six hours. So May I, I, I got the that, bill for please? that too. How long had the tenant been in the possession of the property prior to this time? Uh, I think it was a full lease, uh, about two years. Two years. So you would have had to do the normal wear and tear, and it's just the unusual painting, which would be yeah, a problem. Yeah, but I would have had to put three coats of paint just on. Just listen to what I have to say. A prime coat is all the extra that can be charged. So on this bill of 
forty dollars will allow thirteen dollars. Anything else, Tom? Well, what sorry. about the refrigerator? There, I got. Do you have any bills to show on the refrigerator? Well, no, but I got a friend of mine. He gave me an estimate. He said it would cost about a hundred bucks. Do you have that estimate with you in court? No, no. He just told me. I in the absence of that evidence, sir, I can't be of help to you. Do you have anything else you'd like to tell me at this time? No. The total allowance to you is forty dollars. There's a balance due in the sum of. Two hundred and thirty-five dollars. My judgment will be for two thirty-five. Now, how soon will this be paid? Well, how soon will I have to pay it? If you pay it in ten days, I will suggest to the other party here that they have court costs, providing it's paid in ten days. Yeah. Well. Okay. Do you agree to that? I'd be glad to, Your Honor. Thanks very much for having come in here. Thank you. Thank well. you, Your Honor. Will you call the next case, please? Samuel versus Mooney Custom Upholstery. All right, would you swear the parties? Raise your right hands, please. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this cause, the truth, the whole truth, to help you God. Ma'am, you're suing here for the sum of $50. Will you tell me why? Keep it simple and tell it to me as you would tell it to a friend, please. I had a very lovely sofa that was just a wee bit faded, and I hired Mr. Mooney here to reupholster the sofa for me. After a few weeks, he delivered the sofa and as they were coming through my living room door, uh, they scratched the arm of a the real chair little on the your Honor. I'll door jam. It. it was a chip, not a scratch. A scratch. So uh, the delivery men apologized to me, and they said that that door should have been removed. It was their error. So it took me weeks to contact Mr. Mooney. So at, when I did, he I'm a finally... Man, you see, Your Honor. He, That's the second time I'll caution you in the last, sir. You'll have an opportunity to tell me your story in your own words in a little while. But do not interrupt her again. Continue. After, when I did contact him, he picked up the sofa and he kept it for a week and re-delivered it. But he would not leave the sofa. He, uh, unless I paid fifty dollars for pickup and delivery. Did you pay but him the fifty? Yes, he wouldn't leave me the sofa. All right, go on with your story. Uh, I feel that it was their error in bringing the sofa. They were a little bit careless. They should have known how how to put this in, bring this into my home without damaging it. He should have hired experience. And I, I feel that I should not have to pay this fifty dollars. Anything else at this time, ma'am? That is it, no. That's Let me hear your defense. Complaint. You've been so anxious until now. Tell me now, what is your defense here? Yes, Your Honor, we did damage the couch. I offered to pay her for it. She refused my check. So the price I charged her was just what it cost to pick up and deliver the couch. I fixed the couch for free. I don't... If I fix couches for free, I'll run out of business. I don't have anybody to pick up a couch and deliver the couch. That's all I charged her. And I did a... Tremendous job in fixing that couch. It's much better than what it was before. That doesn't seem to be the issue here. Did your men admit to the fact that they damaged the couch? I don't yes, know what did. my men they say. Had, they just, admitted it. Ma'am, I didn't ask now. you. Just one moment now. Ma'am, don't interrupt him as I didn't want him to interrupt you. Thank Please. you, Your Honor. Go ahead. What else do you have to say here? Well, after all, Your Honor, I offered her my money, $37, with much more than for a little nick in her... In her Sofa. I could not accept $37 because I don't know what it would cost me to have that army finished. Is there anything further? Yeah, I should win. I regret to tell you, you don't win here. It was the negligence, admitted negligence of your people who caused this damage, and you have to pay for that. The judgment for $50 will be granted together with your court cost. That'll be all. Not all claims make it to trial in pro se court. Some are settled before the trial date. It's always a good idea to try and settle a dispute before filing a complaint. Mr. Moore, I've just come from the small claims court. You know, I really hate having to do that, not to mention all the hassle. I'd like for us to come to some kind of an agreement. Uh, Mrs. Cummins, I told you already there's nothing I can do. We took every normal precaution to make sure that nothing would happen to your coat. <laughs> We're a decent guy. Never would have happened. Frankly, it's just a cheap import. It is not a cheap import. I have the receipt right here. This coat is well worth over $100. Don't show me the receipt. Look, if we can avoid having to go to court over this thing, I'll settle for $40. $40 for this new coat, barely worn, clean once. 
Mrs. Cummins, you push me to the limit. I'll make it $50, but that's the limit. $50 is not nearly what this coat is worth or what it's going to cost to replace it. But if you're ready to pay it right now, I'll take it. You got a deal. Someday, you may be a defendant. You may want to settle out of court, or you may decide to let the judge determine who's right. If you are a defendant, be sure to read the summons and make sure you file your appearance on the date written on it. Or you could forfeit your right to defend yourself. If you don't file an appearance, a default judgment could be entered against you and pay the full amount of the damages. Fifty percent of the cases are paid at trial. In the case of a default judgment, the plaintiffs, with the help of the pro se clerks, have a 70% chance to collect their money. Pro se courts are not a panacea. They're not a cure-all for every dispute. But they are a place where you, the citizen, can go without a lawyer to have a fair, impartial, and inexpensive day in court. Whenever you have a small claim that you wish to pursue to its final legal conclusion.